So lately I've been reading some books by Robert Greene, who is a New York Times bestseller. Um, you might recognize The 48 Laws of Power. That's one of his books. He also wrote a book uh, that I'm currently reading, currently reading The 48 Laws of Power. I'm also reading The Laws of Human Nature, and then I'm listening to his book, Seduction. Um, and it's really interesting because as I try to describe what these books are about to anybody, it's, it's really hard to describe them without sounding like these are books about manipulation and books about how to take advantage of other people um, and how to get ahead, which begs a couple of questions. The first one is, is that what these books are actually about, which is probably debatable, but um, we'll try to answer that. And the second question is, uh, is manipulation always a bad thing? And uh, we can dig into that too. So the first one, I, I might say that yes, these books, they're more or less teaching you how to manipulate people. Um, but whether or not that's a good or bad thing, we have to answer the second question. But the manipulation, you know, you'll notice throughout the books if you start to read them are, are, they are, they're generally directed towards helping somebody learn how to gain power and influence. Now, there's another book out there, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I don't know why I had to pause before I said that. How to, how to Win Friends and Influence People, written by Dale Carnegie, um, which is kind of funny because most people look at that book and they're like, ah, oh, this is a great book. This is such a, you know, there's a lot of good material in here and it's very helpful. But nobody really, I've never heard anybody at least, mention that that book uh, is at all manipulative, which is funny because it's effectively the same kind of thing uh, as these books by Robert Greene, but nobody seems to interpret that book as being manipulation when in reality, you could argue it certainly is. And I think perhaps this leads us to the second question here, which is, is manipulation always a bad thing? Perhaps that helps us answer that question because maybe, in fact, manipulation is not always a bad thing or it's simply about the presentation with which you... Uh, you deliver the information, that might be all it is. But I would argue that manipulation is not always a bad thing. And I'll tell you why. I think there are a couple different kinds of manipulation. There's certainly manipulation where you are trying to uh, get ahead. There's manipulation where you're trying to get ahead. You're trying to use and or abuse somebody. Um, we think, I mean, people think all the time in terms of relationships. Um, again, with the book about seduction, you could easily see how people could, uh, you know, use that poorly. Um, but I think really at, at the heart, and maybe there's just a better word for this, maybe manipulation is not the correct word, right? But there's something to be said for studying and understanding human psychology, studying and understanding the psychology of a particular individual in your life who you maybe want to get to know better, who uh, maybe you want them to fall in love with you, right? The whole seduction thing. Or maybe you want to, uh, maybe they're your coworkers and you want a promotion. Um, and, and there's something to be said for, well, if there's no negative consequence to the people around you, is it really, is it wrong or is that just no longer manipulation? Um, even if you're using what you know about psychology and their psychologies to you know, to, to drive your path forward. Um, and let's use the work example, right? Because let's say you, you want to get a promotion at a job and to do so, well, you, you have to work with people. I mean, you, you need to know some things. You probably need some skills, but it's really important that you know how to work with people and you know how to talk to people, you know how to communicate with people. And more importantly, it's, it's that you know how to communicate with the people of whom, no, with the people <laughs> you need to communicate with this is sound, sound redundant. It is important that you know how to communicate, not just in general, but specifically with the people who contribute to that decision as to whether or not you get a promotion, we'll say, right? And so what would, what would one do if they want that promotion and they know who they need to communicate with? They need to study that person. They need to learn what that person looks for, what that person is interested in, what matters to that person, and then they need to deliver on that. And that in and of itself, does that sound like a bad thing? It sounds like you're just... You're just trying to uh, you're just trying to help that person out. I mean, if you're delivering things that are beneficial to that other person, is it a bad thing and is it still manipulation? Or is does that mean that there is such a good thing, such a thing as good manipulation? Right, that might be the other question. And this is where I think the answer is absolutely. Um, another really, I'll give you another good example of this where manipulation. Again, we can decide. Maybe there's another word for it. If you if you know another word for this, what I'm describing, put it in the comments. Perhaps I've just not come across it. Um, but let's talk about like the love languages. Um, if you know anything about the love languages, you know that there are five. Um, there's um, physical touch, quality time, acts of service, gift giving, and words of affirmation. And you could argue, you could argue that it is manipulative to take advantage of somebody else's love languages 
um, to get them to love you back, right? To feel, for them to feel loved. But I mean, that's, that's a great thing. In fact, it's advised that in a relationship, instead of, instead of you loving somebody in your love language, right? Like let's say your love language is touch. You might express love for the other person by giving them hugs and kisses all the time, but that person's love language might be words of affirmation. And so now you think you're pouring love on them because you're always, you're always hugging them and stuff. And they feel like they don't know if you even love them or not because, well, you've not, you have not given them any words of affirmation. Maybe you're not saying I love you. So the smart thing to do would be to understand their psychology, to understand that their love language is words of affirmation and then provide that to them, even if it's not natural to you, right? I mean, that, and that sounds like a great thing because now they're going to feel loved, right? And you're appropriately showing them love. So it's a win-win for both of you. So this is another, it's just a time where, hey, maybe manipulation is not always a bad thing. And this is where, again, we apply that, that concept of manipulation not always being a bad thing. We apply that back to uh, Robert Greene's books. I think it really is all about... It comes down to the, the, the human choice, the decision, the autonomy that we would have, we each have, um, to effectively use that power of understanding people and psychology, use that power in the way that you see fit, which there are bad people who will misuse that power and that happens all the time, but ultimately there's a lot of benefits to it. And I think that the controversy that surrounds those books does not take that into consideration. It doesn't take into consideration the fact that we live in a social environment in every aspect, in work, in play, and that by understanding other people, by understanding their psychologies, you can do well for yourself, but you can absolutely benefit other people as well. And so, are those books teaching to manipulate people? Kinda, kinda. Um, again, unless you think there's a better word for it, um, I mean, there might very well might be. In fact, as soon as I hold that thought, I'm going to look up the definition right now. Hold that. Hold. All right. I should have done this. I really should have done this before I started recording, but that's not how my brain works. So here we are. Uh, the dictionary, the Oxford D dictionary definition of manipulation. The first one is handle or control, typically in a skillful manner, skillful manner, right? He manipulated the dials of the set. Uh, is the example, so clearly that's like physical manipulation. Uh, the second is control or influence a person or situation cleverly, unfairly, or unscrupulously. Um, okay, so by that definition, manipulation doesn't have to be a bad thing because it's it's or, it's any of those. So control or influence cleverly or unfairly. You could argue controlling is not good um, or influencing is not good, but you'd be a liar if you said you weren't doing that literally constantly. We'd all be liars if we weren't saying we weren't doing that all of the time. We constantly try to control and manipulate or control and um, uh, influence. We, we constantly try to control and influence our lives, um, the situations we find ourselves in. I mean, that that doesn't stop. That's never, I mean, you'd be, yeah, like I said, you'd, you'd be lying if you said you didn't do that. So technically, manipulation is not necessarily a negative thing. And again, if you're, if you're, if you're controlling and influencing the situation for your benefit and the other person's benefit, I there's, there's definitely, you're definitely, you could question whether or not that is an issue. If everybody's benefiting from it, it's a win-win for everyone. You could question whether or not that's, that's a legitimate thought. So that's all. That's to say that first, um, I recommend these books. So far, I've really enjoyed them. I can't wait to finish them. And I, maybe I'll make some uh, videos about the books themselves in greater detail. But I've really enjoyed the books. I think everyone should read them. I think that understanding human psychology even if you never actually apply it, it's fascinating. And there's one person you can always apply it to um, that you're not going to get in trouble for, and that's yourself. There's so much in these, in these books um, that you can just turn around and look at yourself and say, wow, when have, when have I done that? When have I been uh, following one of those laws without even realizing it? And it's actually been driving my behavior and maybe driving my behavior for the worse. So if nothing else, manipulate yourself a little bit into improving your life by, uh, by understanding your psychology better. And... Um, that's that on that. I'm going to go drink this coffee. You enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for watching.